Hello creative friends, this is Joy coming to you with another art journal page. This week I decided to follow along with uh, Mike Dinkins art journal page that he did for the March Mission Inspiration and see where it takes me. There's 10 things on the list here that you go through and do on your journal page and then see how it comes out in the end. If you're interested in following along, you can go check out his Facebook page and uh, join in on the fun. So I decided on this page that I would use um, the black gesso that I had. And this gesso I've had for quite some time now, but have yet to use it on an art, art journal page. So this was a perfect opportunity to use the black gesso. Because the first item on the list is to add uh, white or black gesso. So I thought I'd start out with the black gesso. And when I started doing this page, I had no clue uh, what I was going to do, what direction I was going. I just decided to kind of go with the flow and see where it takes me. And in the end, I did like the way that the page turned out. And this was some white gesso. Actually, this bottle was almost empty, and I had watered it down a bit for another project I was working on. So I thought it would be fun to kind of drizzle it around on the page. And this is for the second item on the list, which is to add the opposite um, of, you know, the gesso. So if you add black gesso to start with, then you would add white for the second step. But if you, add, if you start out with the white gesso, then you would add black. It was kind of thick in areas, so I used a paper towel to blot up some of the thicker areas. And then as I was heating it, some of the areas was bubbling up, so I was using a skewer to kind of pop the bubbles. And I kind of like that effect because it gave a little bit more texture to the page. But you do have to be kind of careful because um, you can burn the gesso. I think there was one area where I kind of had it on there too long and burnt the gesso a little bit. So the third item on the list was to add some Ill illegible text or scribbles. So I got out my Posca paint pens, which are the best that I've found. They're wonderful. And did some scribbly, you know, words on here on the journal page. And I didn't really, I just did mostly scribbly scribbles I wasn't like trying to write any particular word or what have you I just wanted to get the look on the page so the third item on the list is to um, add grocery receipt and so I decided to uh, take clear gesso to gesso down um, pieces of this grocery receipt and apparently I have an aversion to straight edges so I was tearing off the edges as well um, I like to, when I'm working with um, any kind of glue or gesso and a paintbrush, I like to pour a little bit in like a little medicine cup, and that just uh, makes it easy to work with. And so that's what I did, poured a little bit of clear gesso in a medicine cup and then use that to adhere down these uh, pieces of uh, grocery receipt. And the clear gesso kind of looks white, but it does dry completely clear whenever it does whenever it dries and um, the text on the grocery receipts they actually disappear after it gets heated up so the next step was to add pattern paper shapes and I had three different sizes and shapes of leaves and so I decided to punch out um, some leaves out of this green pattern paper. And I also found uh, some yellow pattern paper and some red pa pattern paper that I also decided to cut some shapes of leaves out of. And here I'm, I'm punching out um, the yellow, which has uh, little circles or dots on it. And then the red pattern paper has stars. So um, I thought that'd be really cute to use a couple of different colors of pattern paper on this page. And and too, I was thinking that using the three different colors would, you know, give it kind of a fall feel. Um, you know, with the red and the green and the and the yellow uh, leaves. 
because the leaves too are um, they're like uh, oak leaves is the shapes of these leaves so the, that's why I kind of was thinking you know fall leaves um, or fall colors even though this page in the end actually turns out quite colorful so I got some collage podge and, and put it in a little medicine cup and then started adhering down the um, leaves that I punched out um, the biggest ones I kind of put those in the corners of the pages to kind of give I guess the page kind of like little bo uh, little border or whatever in the corners and then um, the rest of them I did the smaller ones the two different si uh, shapes and size smaller ones I put you know, around on the page. So after I finally got all of the leaves down, I started to dry it, and then I noticed that the collage podge had a nice little bit of a sheen to the black, flat black gesso. So I decided to cover the rest of the page with some collage podge to give it a little bit of a, a sheen instead of it just being a flat black and uh, I like the I like the um, way it made the the black look look in, um, in the end and so here I um, went through my stash and I found this little bird that I thought would look cute on this page so I collage podge him down to the page and um, I got him down the page and then of course I, I used a credit card to try to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles um, since this came out of a magazine which was kind of a thin page it wrinkled a little bit but I'm not too concerned about it and then I went through my stash and I um, also found a quote that I thought would be really cute on this page as well that I ended up eventually putting down and that was the next step is to put down a focal or collage element and then here uh, the next step is to make marks with a credit card so I decided to take uh, some yellow and use a credit card to make a border all the way around my page and I really like the way that it it looks and you know it, it kind of brightened the page up and it goes, you know, it went really well with the, the leaves I had on the page, especially the yellow leaves. So then the next part was to uh, apply one highlight color through a stencil. And so I decided to, uh, this page would be cute to have a couple of butterflies. And um, I looked on the color wheel to see, well, what would be a good contrasting color to red, yellow, and green. And it said purple. So I, or purple or purple blue or whatever. So I decided, you know, okay, well, I guess we'll do some purple butterflies on this page. Um, the first uh, stenciled butterfly turned out really nice, but then I did not wipe my stencil off. And so the second one kind of come out a little smudgy, um, but I cleaned off my stencil for the third one and that turned out more crisp, but it was still okay. I mean, it still is, is fine. I'm not too particular about those kinds of things. And I could have probably gone over the butterflies and maybe tried to outline them or add more de definition detail or something, but I, I didn't, I just left them. And I was debating on whether to add a fourth one or not, but decided that three was good. And here I put down the quote that I picked out for this journal page. And uh, that was uh, the next one, number nine, is add journal quotes or phrases. And then the last one is add drip splatters um, with metallic or mica paint. And so I have this gold metallic paint that I thought, you know, would um, be really pretty for drips on here. And I have this um, piece of cardboard that I like to put up because if I don't use the cardboard, I end up with splatters all over my desk and all over everything that's on my desk <laughs> ends up being a big mess so this really helps keep you know the sprays and the splatters from going everywhere and uh, at first I was having a little bit of a trouble getting the splatters to go and um, so I had to keep adding more and more water to the paint if 
but I finally got it thinned down enough to where it was splattering. And as you can see, I covered up the focal point in the picture of the bird and, and my quotes so they didn't get splatters all over them. But that's pretty much my art journal page for the week. Uh, if you like my videos, please like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, happy creating. Bye-bye.